Jackson Radio Show. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. I got something to tell you about foreign policy that's happened. It's being impacted by your president, Donald Trump. It's being impacted big time. It's not being talked about. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. KJRadio.com if you want to call the show. 844-551-8255. Let me tell you what's happening. People are watching the United States get its act together. They're watching a man who is fearless. He does not care what you think. It's not that he's disregarding you. He's charted his course. See, that's the thing about fears. You, you got to know that you're ready for battle and you have to accept that you don't always win. If you, if you think that, then, you know, you're already losing the battle. You have to, there and I and I'm, I want to be make sure I balance this because there are times you know you're going to win because you've studied the enemy. You know what I mean? Maybe you don't. Well, Sun uh, Sun Tzu said this. He says, "If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles." And it's profound because what he's saying is. You can know yourself and not know your enemy and you don't know the outcome. You can know the enemy and be lying to yourself and not know the outcome. But if you know yourself and if you know the enemy, you can run that scenario as many times as you want. The outcome will be the same. And that's a good thing. That's what we've done. See, we know ourselves. We are amazingly righteous. We we're not looking for, like I, tell, I, I tell leftists all the time, I go, look, you can call me a conservative. Okay, you can say whatever you want about me in that regard. I, I'll, I'll accept your title. That's a good title to me. But at its core, I'm righteous and I'm a pragmatist and I want what's right for everybody. And sometimes that can penalize me. I understand we have to pay taxes. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with how much some people think we have to pay. So, you know, going back to Song Su and and his uh, his comment on fear, which is essentially fear, he says, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you know, the results of 100 battles. I want you to understand that's how Donald Trump approaches all these things with the left. He's saying, look, I know what they're going to do. How many times have we said how frustrated have you been over the I don't know, whatever amount of time you've been paying attention to politics? Uh, 10 years, 20 years. How frustrated have you been by saying, holy cow, Republicans, you know what they're going to say. You know, they're going to call you a racist. You know, they're going to call you misogynist. You know, they're going to call you homophobic. You know, they're going to call you a xenophobe. You know this, you know, they're going to ask for higher taxes. You know, they're going to spend more money. You know, they're going to lie to you when they tell you you're going to get your concession when they're getting theirs first. You know all this. And yet you go to battle. Well, I will still apply Song Su's quote to you. If you know the enemy and you know yourself, you not you need not fear a hundred battles. The Republicans have never feared the battle because they've been battling against you. Make sense? Well, it should. Now I want you to apply that to Donald Trump. He knows exactly what they're going to do when they propose DACA. He says, okay. I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to want to get me to give you that. And then you're going to promise to give me something down the road, which means I lose my negotiation points. So I'm not going to do it. I'm the one driving this thing. I know myself. I know what I want. I know what the American people want. You will not get something from me without me getting something from you. I will tell you. Alex is a guy named Alex Karras. He does these negotiation classes. If you're ever flying in an airplane in the old days, you'd always have an Alex Karras seminar on how to negotiate. And I would always crack up at people that would do negotiation. I would say, well, look, give me an example of how you negotiate something. And they'd say, well, you know, look, if you'll do this, then I would and, and it happens in sales all the time. It's like uh, a, a buyer will say, well, Kevin, can you get to, you know, a dollar 15 apart? And you're like at a dollar 23. And they go, look, you know, just just get me to a dollar fifteen. 
And I'll watch rookie sales guys run, run back and they fight for that price. And then they go back to the buyer and they go, Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, I got you that buck 15 or whatever it was the price I said. And the buyer goes, okay. And then the sales guy's like, well, you know, do I have an order? And the buyer goes, no, I just want to see how far you go. You just set the new price. You just set the new low. But see what that person should have done. And I'm sure you're ahead of me is said, so let me just get this right. If I get you a buck 15, are you going to place an order for half a million pieces? Well, I'm not saying that. Then no, that's the price, a buck 25 or whatever I said, right? Because anything other than that, I now know how much I can squeeze out of you every time I talk to you. You you get nothing out of me until I get it. So my point is, Trump, that's a negotiation tactic is to say, what, what are you willing to do? Well, if you'll give us DACA, then we'll do, we'll fund the military. No, that's not even a negotiation. You're going to fund the military anyway. Well, if you'll give us DACA, then we will, uh, and Trump's going, nope, because he knows it stops at my desk. I, I, I asked the question, how far ahead do you think Donald Trump's been thinking? You think he's thinking one step ahead or three steps ahead or what? What do you think is going to happen on February the 8th when they have to come back and redo this again? Do you think the Democrats are going to shut the government down because McConnell did the up or down vote or whatever? Do you think? And by the way, do you also believe that McConnell is going to now try to hamstring President Trump with some sort of fake DACA deal? The, the, what's funny about all of this is how it all works out when you look at the timing of it. So if Donald Trump didn't have a booming economy, if he didn't have all the things we talked about, if he didn't have China committing to us on trade, and, and for the record, that's another one of those things that's going to come down the pike that's going to roar in like a tornado. It's going to come in like a tsunami because trade you know, when you start negotiating trade deals, you don't feel that in that exist, existing quarter because manufacturing has to ramp up. Deals have to be cut. Salespeople have to get, you know, fill the pipeline. So I want you to think six months down the road when manufacturing says, OK, we have we can now supply China some of these products. Salespeople go over and say, hey, China, we have one hundred and eighty three new products we can sell you. Trade deficits have dropped, so profits are going to go up on the products that these people are selling. And the Chinese market, even if the Chinese only open up a small percentage of their market to us, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get, you, you might get a, a $100 billion trade uh, differential. We might go from a $390 billion deficit to a $250 billion. That's $140 billion now circulating in the economy, year one. Okay, that's a pretty good shot in the arm. Then what happens year two when the trade deficit drops by 100, 100 billion dollars, 150 billion dollars more? You're starting to get the picture. Back in a bit. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.